so impressed at this crowd. You know, it is four o'clock on a, in the middle of a weekday afternoon, and I am um, very proud that so many of you showed up just to say hello, and the sign outside was special, and this nice person told me she baked me a cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I can keep my running figure, but um, it's very nice. She's worried that I'm eating too much restaurant food, which is a good thing to worry about right about now. I am um, very energized, I hope you can tell. We have uh, 36 days left to get this done. 36 days. Now, I, I gotta tell you, the most important thing that we have to have happen between now and the first Tuesday of November, we just have to keep Todd Aiken talking. <laughs> it seems almost every time he talks, he helps us a little more. Um, but it's not what he said that is as big a problem. It's the fact that what he says reflects what he believes. And that's really the problem. And at the end of the day, all of you are here today, not because you have some special thing you want me to do. You're here because you have one simple desire, and that is you want your government to reflect your values. Here, here. Yeah. And that is where there is such a contrast in this election. And all you have to do is go through the big four, and you realize it's not that I'm on one end and Todd is on the other end. It's that I'm in the middle and he's so far out that it is a huge contrast. And you go through the big four. He believes Medicare is unconstitutional. And he wants seniors to have to arm wrestle health insurance companies for their coverage. He wants to privatize it. He doesn't like Social Security. He wants to privatize it. And then on top of that, he wants to raise the retirement age and lower the benefit. He wants to abolish, he wants to abolish the minimum wage. He wants to do away with student loans, all federally backed student loans and Pell Grants. And then like the whipped cream and cherry on top, just for good measure, he wants to do away with the school lunch program. So that gives you some kind of sense of his agenda. And obviously, uh, that it doesn't reflect my priorities. Now, do we need to be more careful with taxpayer money? Of course we do. That's why I went to Washington and fought earmarks, why Todd Aiken has been a big earmarker. Do we need to set a good example? Of course we do. That's why I've co-sponsored legislation to stop congressional automatic pay raises. On the other hand, Todd Aiken has voted seven times for his own pay raise. In the same years, he was voting to cut 35 billion from veterans benefits. Oh, okay. So cutting wow. veterans benefits, okay. At the same time, he was raising his own pay. Um, so I really hope that you all will do um, the ultimate act in a democracy. And that's just not voting. But it's deciding that you're gonna have some skin in the game. And by that, I mean giving a little bit of time. Um, we are doing a grassroots campaign like has never been done in this state before. And I mean that. I've been doing this a long time, as you all know. I have never seen a campaign mount an effort like we're trying to mount. We have to knock on at least 100,000 doors a week. Bring it on. Between now yeah. and Election Day. 100,000 doors a week. We have to still make millions of phone calls and what we're doing is, and by the way, your time in this regard is going to be very efficient because we know what we're doing. We're targeting where you're going. We're targeting where you're calling and where you're going and where you're calling are two places. One is where we still have persuadable voters that haven't made up their mind and there still is five to seven percent of Missourians that are completely undecided. The second is are sporadic voters. And those are the voters that voted in 2008 but haven't and voted the right way. They're Democrats. They're going to vote for me. They're going to vote for the rest of the ticket, but they haven't voted since then. So they'll vote, but they just don't vote every time. And we've got to actually try to figure out a way to not only give them a sense of urgency, 
but go and find them on election day and make sure they get to the polls. Yes. And that's what this is about. So if you, how many of you have made phone calls or knocked on doors already? Thank you very, very much. I would really appreciate if the rest of you would consider it. Now keep in mind if you make a phone call, you don't have to talk anybody into anything. This is not one of these awkward things where you're going to be asked questions you don't know the answers to. This is about just identifying whether someone is a sporadic voter. Um, sometimes it may be just calling and following up with somebody we think might want an absentee ballot. There's a variety of different kinds of phone calls we might have you make, or somebody that we know has got an absentee ballot form and we want to make sure that they've actually voted it, that they actually filled it out and gotten it in. Um, maybe it's just we're calling somebody, they know they're already for me, and you want to remind them that the election is just a few days away. You know, those are the kinds of phone calls that we'll be making. And the people-to-people -people contact, I mean, here's the difference between um, the party that I belong to and the other side. Uh, they believe that economic policy can be all about giving more and more to the top and somehow it gets all the way down. Mm. They believe that it's all about buying millions of dollars of television advertising and trying to take elections out from underneath the American people with great big rich corporations and mega millionaires that are writing unlimited checks under Citizens United. You know what we believe? We believe elections are people to people. We believe elections are bottom up, not top down. We believe economy, our economy is strong because of bottom up, not top down. We believe that this is more about strengthening the middle class rather than the folks at the very top. And we want to make sure our campaign reflects that same ethos, which means we need more people power. So uh, I really hope that you will, and I, I tell this to people and they go, gosh, don't say that, but it's kind of true. You know how you feel on your way to the dentist? <laughs> you know, you're kind of dreading it, and you're thinking, you know, why did, I, why did I make the appointment? I don't have to really have to go to the dentist, and now I've made the appointment, and I have to go. You know, coming in to get a sheet to go knock on doors or to make phone calls probably feels a little bit like going to the dentist. But you know how you feel when you leave the dentist? Boy, I'm really glad I got that done. <laughs> I feel a lot better. I know now that my teeth are clean, and I know now that there's not a problem, and or I got that filling taken care of and it really didn't hurt. And uh, you know, that's really what this is about. Um, except you're not taking care of your teeth right now, you're taking care of your country. And um, I think that an hour worth of your time would be um, a great blessing to this campaign. And I think if you give an hour doing this, you're gonna be surprised how much fun it is and the sense of camaraderie you're gonna feel and you're gonna wanna do more. And that's the goal. So um, please sign up for another shift. Now I'll give you the best news of the day. We've been polling, right? We've been tracking where I am. And um, we typically don't release our polls publicly, but we decided today that we would because um, today we got our poll back and we're up by nine. All will come back in. It's only a matter of time until Carl Rove and the Koch brothers and all those guys are back on TV. And by the way, they will use the mean and ugly pictures. Be sure to tell everyone you see that I'm not that mean and ugly. <laughs> and, 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 and tell them that, um, that I am, you know, I, I hope, I mean, it's a very nice introduction Zach gave me because um, I really do want people to feel like that, that I'm, I feel their pain, that I understand them, that I relate to people in this state. I understand uh, the struggles that everybody has, and I know that what you're most worried about is making sure your kids have the same chance as you had, and making sure our grandchildren are still celebrating the best country on the face of the planet. And um, in that regard, I am very grateful, and I'm really excited about all the young people, and I've got very bad news for all you little ones. Do you know what my mom and dad did to me when I was your age? They brought me to things just like this. <laughs> You're going to be standing up here getting people to volunteer for you as you run for office. But thank you all for being here very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have about it.